Hey everybody, I'm Jody Dahmer and thanks for watching Beargrass Thunder. It's a beautiful day in the alley today and we're going to do another State of the Alley for you guys. So here we have all the shopping carts that we've collected just from each end of the alley and we finally found a place to store them. Uh, looks like we got Dollar General, we got Burlington, we got Kroger, Walmart, mainly these are from Walmart. And it goes to show how many different stores that this neighborhood actually goes to, right? But since a lot of families here don't have vehicles, this is the only way to bring goods back from the stores because the parking lots are made for people to drive to, right? So this is a problem that we see in a lot of areas that are poorer, that don't have the same kind of access that we do inside 264 and we really need to do something about that connectivity between neighborhoods. Uh, otherwise, we have this problem that no one really wants to spend money and time to fix, and so it just builds up. So, we're working on getting more painting done here. Uh, you know, hopefully maybe get uh, one wall covered uh, before the end of the year, but if not, this has been a really great accent piece, uh, whereas before it was just uh, pretty much nothing. So we know that whatever we hang here has risk of being damaged by wind, by people, we don't know. But we were really, really thankful to have this hung up for as long as it did. This was a landscape painting that was done on some bamboo slats. And you can see our previous state of the alley to see when we hung it up, but I think that Part of what we're doing here is actually incorporating that transition from a piece of artwork that we hung up at the beginning to having a more weathered piece of artwork later on. Uh, it's a, it doesn't have to be new to be art, and it doesn't have to be beautiful and clean to be art, and it's something that as long as you maintain whatever you're hanging up, you know, whether if it gets too bad like this, we're probably going to replace this with a different thing of art. But we're, uh, we're just really thankful that most of the stuff that we've hung up has actually not been vandalized. It's mainly been due to weather, rain, uh, birds, <laughs> but um, I'm telling you, we, we've really had a lot of success here. So this is uh, a couch that someone who lives around here probably is used at some point but it goes back to what I'm saying about when you live in a densely populated area that doesn't get the same amount of service from the city then we get problems that just keep on building and building and building if I you know could pay $200 and get a dumpster to come here to just to get this couch out of the way I could but I know that if this couch showed up on a street in Anchorage or Prospect, then we could probably have this situation resolved within hours. With us living where we live on the other side of 264 on Newburgh Road, this area does not get the same level of community access and especially the same level of sanitation and pickup because when you have more people living here, eventually people move. and. I don't feel like there's a lot being done to address this really kind of systemic thing we have here. So, oh. So here we got the pokeweed, and you can see that the pokeberries have almost been completely eaten up. Um, the stalk has turned from pink to a nice golden brown, and you can see here that the stocks are actually pretty sturdy and this is awesome to have in uh, area because the birds now the songbirds like cardinals that overwinter actually here they don't migrate can use this as a perch to stay away from predators such as cats but also to look around to see if there's any extra food so having stuff here that looks dead can actually serve a purpose later on to other wildlife you don't need to chop it down just because it's outlived its usefulness to you. There are so many other animals and birds that could actually use this as a home. So 
you can see here that all of the leaves from this mulberry tree have fallen for the year. And look underneath. All of the leaves that fell are actually blanketing the pavement and forming a layer, a very thin layer of mulch. Now, if the property owner actually leaves this and maybe even adds a little bit of soil on top, then we got a great planting bed and a new border on the landscape that he didn't actually need to pay money to install. So when you work with nature, you actually can get a lot of benefits for your property, especially for your property value by having the soil conditions right enough to grow the things you want to grow. Because uh, for many of our soils, especially as we get into a watershed like Beargrass Creek, it's very, very clay. Um, you know, maybe some silty loam, but a lot of the time it's very hard to grow things in a clay soil. So when you have things like leaves that help to add nutrients to the soil and attract birds and things that can add more nutrients to the soil, it, uh, it really does benefit. So, if you look down here, you can see that even though the mulberry tree lost its leaves, there's still a lot of green. And we're going to touch on this more uh, in our video at Beargrass Creek State Nature Preserve, but this is actually honeysuckle. And honeysuckle is an invasive plant from Russia. Um, it's also called Amur honeysuckle because it's the Amur River in Russia that uh, it's populated in. And it's meant for Siberian winter. So it means that it needs to be hardy enough to survive sub-zero temperatures, but also retain its leaves long enough so that in that short Russian winter, it gets enough food and nutrients. Now, when you move a Russian plant into Kentucky, this thing can thrive. It's one of the last plants in our ecosystem right now to actually lose its leaves. And what that means is that no seeds underneath that have any chance of survival because it will smother out anything that grows underneath it, which makes it a very hard plant to actually get rid of in our landscape. And we are covered in it in every city in Kentucky. And so we actually need to work together with the state government, the local government, neighborhood councils at the local level but also help to create some kind of ordinance to restrict the growth of this thing. Because if deer can't move through the forest, they're gonna start using the main roads. And we see this all the time in Fisherville that when a deer is trying to cross a, a highway going 50 miles an hour, the deer is not gonna win that one and you know, probably neither are you. We've started to uh, flesh out our fleur-de-lis. We're really excited uh, because with Lou City and all the momentum that we have now with our uh, new professional women's soccer team in Louisville, we decided to actually make this uh, uh, Lou City's colors. Uh, we're big fans here in the neighborhood and uh, we wanted to do something Louisville but also we have a really awesome thing here with uh, with Lou City FC and we really wanted to bring some of those colors to the neighborhood. And so you can see here that we've also done this side. Uh, it's not finished yet we still need to outline the letters but we're really getting there and making progress and We've had a lot of uh, community involvement here too, which has been awesome. So, I know that you saw this be uh, before in our previous video, but we've actually done a lot with mulching this. We've laid down a lot of cardboard, Amazon boxes, uh, stuff from Aldi, and we've put mulch down on top of it so that it will smother out any of the invasive Johnson grass in the alley. And so we're really excited about that. We also have some new additions to the alley. We got five new trees from Trees Louisville, uh, some of their giveaway uh, that was happening this winter. And uh, we're really excited because we now have a magnolia tree, we have a red bud, we have a maple, we have a, a Kentucky coffee tree. So we have, in this stretch, we have about seven to nine different kinds of trees here now, which before there were zero, right? So being able to actually bring some biodiversity back into a space, it's, it's incredible. Oh, 
So this is interesting. So you can see how the water pools in the asphalt. So why is the asphalt still having water in it when this is dry? There's no water here. And the reason is that this mulch has actually absorbed the water. And in areas, especially industrial areas um, that were developed in the 50s, 60s, they paved over everything. And so water has nowhere to go except downstream into the floodplain. So when you're talking about communities like this that are surrounded by asphalt, you're gonna have way more chance of flooding. And uh, it, it treats different sections of the city unfairly when it comes to actually planning for these major floods that keep, keep happening. I mean, 1937 was, you know, less than 100 years ago, and there's a chance it'll happen very, very soon. So we need to really talk about flood control. Thank you so much for joining us on another State of the Alley with Beargrass Thunder. Feel free to like our Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube, or, you know, send us a shout out at beargrassthunder at gmail.com. We really want to hear your ideas. Looking forward to another one.